So this is my bike, it's a Boardman Road Sport, three years old. Uh, there is nothing left apart from the frame really and the seat stem. Uh, from the day I bought everything's been changed, just more suited to myself. Uh, it came with a Claris group set on it which is, he's gone on to a winter bike. Um, this is the Shimano 105. Uh, the wheels are H plus Son rims, are the archetype rims, built on Novatech hubs. I, I built these myself a couple of years ago. Uh, tubeless tyres, uh, really good, really good. Uh, the crank set, it's, uh, it's a compact 11, uh, sorry, it's an 11 speed, it's a 50-34. Obviously that means there's 50 teeth on the outer big ring, 34 on the inner small ring. Set at the back is it, at the moment there's 1132 on it. I have an 1128, I'll swap about sometimes, uh, depending if I'm going on very hilly. Uh, but the bigger sprocket at the back, the bigger that you get, the easier it is to pedal up the hills, and that's what I'm looking at doing. Um, I live on the edge of the Peak District, I can go out for 20 30 miles and quite easily do two or three thousand feet of climbing which is uh, it's very nice but it's tough on your knees uh, and I'm not getting any younger so I need to make it easier and just protect my knees a little bit just spin up the hills so we're going to look in at putting a 40 tooth cassette on the back there I've got a mountain bike cassette to put on there it's uh, an 1140 um, and I've got a new chain because it's going to be longer you will need a longer chain to get around the bigger cog and we've also got uh, a road link, which is a little extension piece for the derailleur hanger. It'll bring the derailleur down a little bit. See how close the top jockey wheel is to the 32. Obviously a 40 is going to come down to here. So this will bring the whole de derailleur lower and it will give it that clearance. So let's get on. So just to be clear, we, we, we're going to be converting the Shimano 105 5800 series drivetrain. Uh, the cassette we're going to be using, uh, it's this SLX M7000, uh, it's a mountain bike cassette. Uh, I believe the 5800 series 105 groups that, that this is, is now being superseded by the R7000. And the mountain bike equivalent is the M7000. So it's the same technology as used in there, the hyperglide and everything. The splines are in the same place uh, on the cassette. If you watch some videos, some people use a spacer and some people have managed without it. Um, we're going to measure, do some measurements on the back of the cassette and see whether or not we need it. That was uh, 44.99 from uh, Wiggle. And in the same box, the chain came as well. I ordered the chain was £29. Uh, this is, it's, this says it's the Shimano 105. Uh, uh, and it obviously, it works with the M7000. It's a uh, road or mountain. Uh, it shows you the symbols there actually. Road bike, mountain bike, e-bike. Um, it's 11 speed specific, it's 116 links. Um, I've not been able to find a 126 link for sale, but I'm hoping the 126, uh, 116 links will be enough. It comes with a quick link as well. Uh, first, when, when I put the group set on that, they didn't come with a quick link. It came with a pin out by the quick link extra, but it comes with one now, that's good. Uh, and that's the derailleur um, extension that I was talking about. Uh, the rear mech's going to come off, that's going to go on the frame. Uh, and the re mech will go on to that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to lower the mech by about an inch and a half. Uh, that was, I think it was £4.50 from eBay, a random eBay seller. I think it was called Burton Bikes. Um, came really quickly, yeah, a couple of days after ordering it. So thumbs up, Burton Bikes. Uh, the spacer, if we need one or not, I've got several lying about. Bike shop or sell them, eBay. Uh, it's a, a 1.8 mil spacer. Uh, the, the wheels that I've, I've built for this Boardman, uh, the H Plus Sons, uh, I can use them on my winter bike, which has got the uh, Claris group set. And using that spacer, I can take the cassette off and put the Claris, uh, the eight speed on, uh, and the spacer, it works perfectly. So I, I can swap about the wheels, that's why I have these spacers around. So we'll have a look and see if we need it. 
So if we just talk a little bit about the tools that we're going to need to do this, uh, I've got a really comprehensive set of mechanics tools in the garage. And apart from perhaps Allen keys uh, and the odd spanner, we're really not going to use them on a bike. Uh, everything is, is specific to a bike. Um, I recommend buying a set like this. This was £50 from Halfords. Uh, and it's got all of the specialist tools that you will need with a bike. Uh, what we're going to going to need the quick uh, quick link pliers a chain breaker for putting a new chain on um, cassette tool and the cassette tool wrench and a chain whip so if you used to buy these separate you're probably looking at a tenner for a chain whip tenner for a cassette tool a tenner for a chain breaker that's £30 just in those three tools there. Uh, this set was £50. Uh, you get the cone spanners. These are different to normal spanners. are a lot thinner. Uh, you can get in behind the brakes to hold that nut while you're tightening up. Um, and obviously for the cones on the wheel bearings, normal spanners just don't have... Uh, they're, they're too wide. They won't, uh, they won't be able to do the cones properly. This is the extractor used this quite a few times. This is for bringing off um, these square tapered crank arms uh, for pulling it off the taper, invaluable. Can't do it without that tool. Uh, bottom bracket tool, uh, probably not gonna use the screwdrivers or these bits, I mean the torque sets. I've got a full set of torque sockets anyway, but nothing on my bike is torques. Uh, that's the tool for uh, putting the preload on the Holotech at crank bearings, uh, chain hook there, handy tool we'll use that as well. So yeah, £50, uh, really good value. You get a set of Allen keys as well, I've, I've got the key set, I'll be using them, they're a bit easier to use, but uh, uh, if you don't have a car and you don't need a lot of tools, then just for a bike that is perfect. So the first thing we need to do is uh, put the chain on the smallest sprocket and take the back wheel off. So once the wheel's removed, I'm going to take the cassette off. I will unscrew the uh, quick release, put the spring and the screw back on there so I don't lose them. Now this is where we use a cassette tool. Uh, that goes in there and these splines on the outside, they engage on the splines on the inside there of the screw. So that goes in there and it's got to be turned anti-clockwise but the trouble is when we turn it anti-clockwise you can see that the uh, it just operates against the free hub so we need to uh, hold the chain still uh, hold the um, cassette still to be able to undo that and this is where the chain whip is, comes in just wrap that around and hold that on there it's like a lever and we've got a number of different options uh, for holding the chain link uh, for the cassette tool. It's a 24 mil flat, so you can use an adjustable wrench or a big uh, big spanner on there. Uh, but the tool set came with a half inch adapter and an eight mil Allen key. One's that. And that's it, you just need to break it and it will come off. The screw there is a wave washer on there careful not to lose that so as easy as that if you've got the right tools it takes uh, it's only seconds and the whole of the cassette will just come off and it is and it's a number of different pieces with various spaces in the middle of them uh, the back three are all machined together uh, so I believe it's the same on, uh, on the mountain bike one have a look, we'll get that out and we'll have a look. There we go. Oh. Okay. <coughs> with the 
a plastic thing just to hold it all together. But uh, if we get that 32 ring, the biggest on the old cassette, in comparison to the 40, it's significantly bigger. Uh, where are we going to go? It tells you the, uh, the numbers on it. So I've got a, I've got a 31, which is uh, slightly smaller than the very biggest one. And then above that, I've got a 35 and a 40 ring. So I'm going to be able to spin up hills. Obviously, we're going to lose uh, the range between them. We're going to get longer and longer gaps between them. But that's the trade-off. So let's have a look, see if we're going to need the spacer. Do the new cassettes. Biggest piece off, that's what we want, and biggest piece, the 32, the old one. Now the straight edge, straight across the back, some figure blades. There's a, I'm going to measure that gap there. Oh, get them open. Metric feeler gauge. Uh, the biggest one is a 0 0.8, 8 tenths of a millimetre. And you probably can't see that, but yeah, 8 tenths it goes through. Bend it slightly because it's going at an angle against the flat when it goes on to the free hub this is what's going to butt up against the back of it so we're measuring the gap between the flat surface of the back ring and that the end of the free hub it's 0.8 of a mil and there is the hair's width on either side of it and that uh, that is a 105 cassette and it goes onto the 105 free hub so that fits perfectly with about a millimetre. So if we look at the, uh, the M7000, the Martin bike cassette, we'll do the same again on the straight edge over the back and yeah you can see there's a significant gap there, probably about three mil. Well this is the spacer, 1.8 millimetre spacer, if we put that in position straight edge over the back again. Feel the blade. And just get that in there, there's a hair's whip just between them. Perhaps a little slack if anything. It's a 1.8 millimetre space you probably could do with maybe a 2, 2.2, 2, something like that. But I'm sure that's going to work fine. So the hair's whip is maybe two hair's whips. But obviously without it there's a huge gap there and that's not right. What it's going to mean is when that goes onto the wheel, this chain ring at the back is going to be too close to the spokes. So when this is assembled we need to put the spacer on first. And that's the next stage. You'll go around these, uh, these splines here, one of them is wider than all of the rest of them. When you look onto the uh, splines on the actual cassette, one of them, that one there, is wider than all the rest, so it only goes on into one position. But first of all, the spacer goes on. It should just go on. Tight. Okay, uh, get the wide bit at the top. The wide bit at the top, a bit of the cassette. There it goes. So the next one, look for the wide bit on the cassette. Each ring is stamped. This is 20. 27, 2.7, uh, 27.0, it says there, so it's 27 teeth, uh, 11S, 11 speed, uh, each one of the teeth is stamped, so we just need to make sure that we get those uh, 
uh, get the rings with the writing on the outside so that you can read them. Spacer. Next ring, this is a 24. Spacer. Next ring is a 21. Spacer. Next ring is a 19. 19. Right, there we go. Another spacer. If you don't have a spacer and you need a spacer uh, for the back, the original cassette. There's several of those. Uh, I think I measured them. They're two mil. I think. Uh, you could use one of them at the back quite easily. Save you buying one. Uh, this is the it's a 17. Another spacer. And this one is a 15. And splice, it's getting tight on there now. This is a differently shaped one. Uh, this has got like a, a step in it. There's no spacer it goes between them. The space is kind of built into this ring. This is the 13. And it looks like I've got one more to go on. Two ones. Here's the wide portion. That's going to be the 11. Yeah, the 11 it's stamped on. flat on there. Now the lock ring with the wave washer. To make sure that you're getting them on square. To put it on the cassette tool first. Thread the rod into the hub. And it will just gonna get it to bite that first thread. Pretty square. Is that it? There we go. Now you don't need the chain whip for tightening it. It'll get tightened as you put power down through the pedals. That's the way that it needs to be tightened anyway, but we'll give it, you'll hear it click. There we go, that's tight enough, that's it. That's the 40 cassette on. Quick release. Obvious, I know, but uh, the quick release, the lever, that goes on the other side. Otherwise, when it's in position closed, it's going to interfere with the rear mech. So it goes on the non drive side. The spring on. And the little cap. So that's the wheel complete. So the old chain, uh, I say old, it's been looked after, it's been done a few thousand miles, I will certainly uh, use it in the future, but this has got a quick link on it somewhere, I found it before I took the wheel off, there it is, there's a quick link, bring that down to there and I'll show you where the quick link tools work, even though I'm sure you know. This is a chain hook. It comes in the uh, it comes in that kit. When you release that quick link, it stops it the chain unraveling and going all over the floor. You'll leave that there. And a little click. The side of the road, you can do this with a, a shoelace or a piece of wire. You can push it through and pull them. And it will squeeze the two links together so you can take the quick link. chain up doing its job. Put that safe. Need to clean I think this chain. So we'll let that go through there. Through that scratching the frame. And there's my old chain. So we'll 
put that on the scale and see what this weighs. Now it's time to put the road link in to remove the rear mech and leave all the cable and everything connected. It's a five mil Allen key. Just undo that there. Leave that hanging down. Yes. Silly. It's got a, it's a recess for that cap nut just to sit flush to it. So that has to go that way. So uh, makes it obvious now. And in typical fashion, it's no longer a five mil key. This is a six mil. This one. So it's got a little bit of movement in it, but I'm going to bring it all the way down so that uh, the B screw platform is. There's a little peg on the actual road link that's going to butt up against there. So I'll try in that position first. I'll get it tight. You're only screwing into the mech hanger, which is only alloy, so it's quite easy to strip the thread if you're over zealous. So firm but not mental. Rear mech should then screw into here. Just holding it up. Make sure that B screw is not going to get snagged. That's it. Yeah. Quite a bit of adjustment left on the B screw. Oh, we'll see what it looks like when we put the wheel back on. Now the Shimano 105 5800 series rear mech. They come in two flavours. They come in the SS, which has the short cage, and this is the GS, which they call the medium cage. It's all about the distance of those two jockey wheels. The longer it is, the more slack the chain, the derailleur will be able to take up of the chain. And using a big difference between the ring size on the cassette, you need a, a longer mech. When it's in the small gears, you've got quite a lot of chain, and this will take up, this will spring back and take up the tension. So there's the short cage and the medium gate cage, and that implies that there is a large cage, but there isn't. You think if you call something medium, like this is the medium cage, this is smaller and a larger, wouldn't you? But there isn't. It's just small and uh, small and medium. This is the medium cage. So let's get the wheel on um, and we'll have a look how far away this top jockey wheel is going to be away from that 40 ring. Okay, we'll come in with the wheel. Move that out of the way. As best we can for now. tighten these for now <laughs> if we move that in you can see that the cassette is just touching the tooth the top jockey wheel you can see it there. it's just but I've got a 10 mil up left to go on my B screw yet, so we'll put the B screw in and uh, see if we can pull that further away. Two portions of the chain together. and see how it runs with it, uh, it being full. Probably going to have a couple of links that I'm going to need to take off. Right, 
Well, that's the 116 links of the chain on. Small at the back, small at the front. As you can see, we've got a bit of rubbing here. Let me change to clear that top jockey wheel so it's too long. Uh, let's go up to the top chain ring and have a look and see what the gifting, shifting feels like as well. So it's severely cross-chained and big at the front and big at the back. But the shifting was actually absolutely fine. Pretty much in line at the back. And we've still got a little bit of play there. Certainly check out two or three links there maybe. Chain hook. to remove two links. I'm probably going to break it here. There'll be two links and two side plates gone. So we'll get the chain breaker. Two links and two saw lots of side plates. There it goes. Climb up the bit out. See what I mean? Been doing it by hand, it's so much easier. Show sure. right, we need to go. Let's go on big, big at the front. Let's change that up. So it runs big, big at the front. Yeah, it's about a full stretch there. You're never going to cycle like that. That's going small, small. cycle like that either. We've got clearance now. Before the chain was touching the top jockey wheel wasn't it? We've got that clearance now. Let's just trim that front neck. Changes into all 11 perfectly. I've not touched the index in at all. Two down, two down, two up, two, two, three. say that the uh, jobs are good. All we need now is to go out and road test it. 
So I'm going to give it a good road testing, uh, make any little adjustments if I need to. I'll let you know what the what I have to do in the next video. I'll get a bit of footage out on the bike as well, uh, show you it working, and let you know how it's been on the hills. Okay, thanks for watching.